We're losing Levi and Tuway Lolo. How much of an impact is that? Leadership, you know, um, Levine is, is a great, great man. Uh, he shows up every day ready to work. Um, you know, his leadership, he provides, you know, being that quiet leader, uh, guys following him by example, him working his tail off every day and just his presence in the room. You know, when you lose a guy like that, you know, it's, it's hard to replace, you know, the leadership part of it. Uh, but he's a great man. He works his tail off. And he'll, he'll get back. He'll get back. He's healthy. When, once he's healthy, he'll get back. He's a, he's a good man. Yeah. Coach, what have you seen from C.J. Board? Um, I know last year he played some gunner for you, and he, he contributed on specials. How has he, you know, what's, what's he shown you this year so far? Speed. All right, C.J.'s getting better, and, and I'm, I'm excited for him uh, and the opportunity that he has out in front of him uh, to compete every day and get out here with these guys. He's, he's done a really good job. So I look forward to watching him in the preseason and see how he progresses. From, from outside looking in, when you look at the gunner position, you think, or we think, or some of us think, this guy's got speed, just put him at gunner and make it work. Tell me why there's more to that position than just the guy's fast, let's go, just go make him a gunner. Right, it's, it's a great question. You know, at that position, you have to have, obviously, the first thing is speed. Uh, you have to have some savvy at the line of scrimmage, you know, because a lot of times you're getting double vice. And uh, when you get an opportunity to put that speed on display, you got to use it. And obviously, you got to be, be able to tackle in space. And, uh, you know, all these guys are working at it. They're all getting reps. You know, our guys, Quinny and, and Blev and, and Jerome, Mike Try, all these guys are working with these gunners, and they're doing a heck of a job of uh, just bringing them along. You know, the maturation process of a gunner is not easy. It's not just speed. Speed helps, but, you know, what happens when they get a good jump on you? What happens when if they trap you in the vice? What happens if a guy gets his hands on you? What are you going to do? So we're working on all those things and getting better at it and trying to make sure that CJ and all the rest of the guys are moving down the road. To you add to that. Assess, uh, I'm sure after last season into the off season, when you look at the special teams units as a whole, what are you looking to say, okay, this year we need to do X better? We be really more consistent. Just be more consistent, you know, overall. Uh, and that's what this thing's all about. You know, when, I, when, when you go out in the field and you know what you're going to get, you feel a lot better as a coach. You know, when you know I'm going to get X, Y, and Z from this group and I'm going to get X, Y, and Z from that group, you feel a lot better. And that, to me, the consistency part's most important. How do you get that? Because you have such a revolving door of players. <laughs> it's a great question. In those, in those it, regards. Now. And it's hard. You know, that, that you want to be as consistent as you can possibly be. You know, it's just like it's no different than O-line, D-line, you know, or offense and defense, right? You, you want to have consistent people in the same spots all the time. But we all know that doesn't happen with special teams, right? So you want to be consistent how you teach, right? And you want to be consistent how you drill. So when the next guy has to step up, it's the same thing. You know, you don't day, have to fall uh, off. Gabriel was talking about um, fielding some punts, and John Ross was back there. Mm -hmm. And he said uh, about Ross, he said he was there, and then he wasn't. Right. Um, that's him, right? I mean, if he can be there and then not there, that's that's going to help make the team, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's that's a that's a that's a good trait to have. Uh, speed is always good. You know, John Ross is is a, is a very fast human being. Uh, I don't think I've ever been around a guy that fast. So, uh, but no, he's, it's good to have all those guys, just the, man, the depth in, at that spot, you know, at the returner position, it, it's, it's a, it's a fun thing to coach. Can he be an explosive returner? I mean, he has, we're going to, we're going to find out here in a minute, you know, we're going to find out here in a minute. It's, uh, I'm excited for him and the opportunity that he has, and we got a bunch of guys back there that can do it. So it'll be fun. What, what, what are you you see him having a, a spot with you guys? Kadarius is just like all the rest of these rookies. He got to earn his way. You know, he's no different than, you know, rookie free agent out of, you know, Georgia Southern, you know, <laughs> Ray J. I mean, he got to earn his way. He got to earn, he got to earn our trust. He got to earn his teammates' trust, and that's that's just the reality of the situation. You know, nobody's gonna come in here and anybody's given anything. You're gonna earn everything you get. What intrigues you or excites you about him as a returner? You know, we, we all saw the tape about the kid. I mean, we've seen it. I mean, he has he has speed, he has quickness, you know, all of those things. But, you know, this ain't the swamp. This is the Meadowlands. Coach, you know, it's a little different. You talked about him earning that trust way back in the spring. Has he made any strides in doing that? Well, all of the rookies are trying. They're all attempting to, uh, to make those strides, you know. But 
you want to see it in the meetings, right? You want to see it in the practice fields, but ultimately it's going to be there. You know, it's going to be right there in that stadium when the lights are shining the brightest. Let's see what they do. You know, because that to, to us, the practice part of it is is the most important thing that we do. But obviously, game day is gonna gonna make the you know the side and figure for us. You know, as coaches, as we as we look at. Them. Thomas, you know what you're getting with Jabril as a returner. How much do you have to balance how much he does for the team with do I keep on running him out there? Jabril is a football player, and it, you know he's he's one of those guys. If if you take him, if you take things away from him. It takes away from him as a player. And the more you give him, the better he is. And, uh, you know, I, I think if you put Jabril at tailback, you, you know, it, it wouldn't matter. You know, he's just a football player. You know, so you, know, you put him in any position, you trust him. You know, because you know he's going to give his best. Uh, he's going to work his tail off, and he's going to be a great teammate. He's going to bring the energy. He's going to bring the juice. And when it's time to make a play, he's going to be looking to make one. So regardless if it's hands team, if it's onside kick, if it's third and three, whatever it is, you know, in the, in the penny package, he's going to be looking to make a play. Thomas, how do rookies earn your trust? Being consistent, being coachable, being able to uh, execute when called upon, because a lot of times rookies don't get a lot of reps, you know, especially some of those down the line guys. And then when you put them on there, put them in the game, they step up and they make a play, that's how they earn trust. After the offseason, the first time you looked at Patrick, did you do a double take or anything? Like, where did he go? Patrick, I'm sorry. I'm, uh, no. <laughs> that's a good question. No, I, I'm happy for Pat. You know, he's, uh, he's, he's worked his tail off, and I'm happy for him, you know, it, just to be able to, you know, lose that weight and, and, and you know, we all, like, he lost it and I found it. So, <laughs> you know, but I'm happy for Pat. T-Mac, um, I, I don't know if you saw this article, but there was an article about why special teams coordinators make good head coaches. And I'm just wondering, I don't know if you can answer this or not, but have you seen an increase in your responsibility, your contributions, given that you basically do have your hands in working with offensive line, you know, receivers, a variety of positions. So do you actually, see an increase in what you contribute to the meetings and you know with the feedback my job hasn't changed you know um, the situation with being a head coach in the league and you know all of that stuff i just focus on my job i focus on whatever my responsibilities i'm given and you know i've always found in this league if i take care of the job that i have the next job it'll jump in my lap and it always has been that way everyone i've ever chased it's always gotten away from me but the ones that that I always get, they just kind of jump right in your lap because I'm just going to focus on what my job is. I'm not trying to do any more or any less. I just want to do my job and uh, make sure our guys are getting the best coaching they can possibly get. And, uh, and that's it. How does John Ross compare to some of the fastest returners you've ever seen personally or coached? Uh, you know, he's fast, just put it this way. He's, he, he is right at the top of the list. You know, he, he has. He has what we call ooey speed. Like it's, <laughs> it, he, he, he can he can get it, you know. So, but it, it's fun to watch him practice, and uh, you know when he gets his opportunity to get out there and go play, I, I look forward to watching him play. We know Gary Brightwell was drafted with a you know eye on special teams. Where does he fit in in your mind? Teams on you know as a backup running back, and he has to, he has to find his role on this team, you know. Uh, he understands why he was brought in here, and he knows that. He knows we got 26 back there, and uh, he's just trying to find his way like all the rest of these rookies. They, they don't even know they don't know. And, and, and it's our job as coaches to make sure um, they figure it out. You know? So we're just trying to you know, push him along, have him uh, understand what he needs to do to help this football team take the next step. Last one. Team Agnet. As someone with a pre-existing condition, do you make any kind of impassioned plea to players over the previous month or so about the vaccine, or does anything make you uncomfortable about it? You know, it's so many different things about the vaccine. I'm not going to get into all of it, but it, it is it is what it is. The situation is what it is. You know, I try and do. I control what I can control. You know, what I put in my body, where I where I am on a daily basis. Um, you know, I, I take a lot of supplements to try and counteract some of this stuff. So I, I just got to, I, con, I concern myself with me. I just try and take care of me because I've had a whole bunch of other things that, you know, like you said, pre-existing pre conditions. I just try and do the best that I can taking care of my health. And, you know, if anything happens, then, you know, it's life.
feeling good now? I'm, I'm great. Great. I, I can't Everything complain at all. Positive yeah. in regards to checks and stuff? Yeah, I had a check up uh, probably about about six weeks ago, and everything is good. So, uh, you know, I can't complain. Uh, you know, I got a clean bill of health, and I'm just trying to, just trying to stay healthy and make it on through the year. You know, try and get them better every day. That's it.